This video is about the sorted function from Python built-in series of function Python. Luckily it comes with a number of built-in functions that we don't really need to import. We just use them as is if we've got Python installed on our machines. I'm on a Mac and I've got Python installed, so no problems. But today I'm gonna to be talking about the sorted function. As a data scientist for over a decade now, I have used the sorted function so many times to know how nice and how valuable that function is for my data wrangling tasks. You might have come across sorting functions in different ways. You might have had to write your own sorting functions. But today I'm gonna to show you how this powerful and memory efficient one really works under the hood. Before I do that, if you haven't already seen my previous videos on built-in functions, the links are up the top right. I've got a video on the map, on the filter, lambda, and so many other functions that you can go and watch and understand what, how they work. For this one, let's jump into it. Okay, we're talking about the sorted function. The sorted function can be used on any iterable, so if you don't know what iterables are, go watch my video on the map function. I have a huge discussion on the iterables. But essentially, if you've got a list that looks like this and has got one, two, and three over it, and you can run a for loop that says for number, let me just spell it correctly, number in numbers, print number, that's an iterable because you can say, hey, take one, take two, and take three. You can say, take apple, take banana, and say, take orange. So lists are a type of iterable. So we figured that one out. Let me delete that one and then get into the sorted function. The main construct of the sorted function is that it takes an iterable, right? Like a list, like a tuple, like a set and such and such. It takes a key. You can provide what is your criteria that you want the sorted function to sort your iterable. Is it numbers? Is it text? Is it whatever it is? And then you can define if you want it to be reverse. By default, the sorted function sorts it on an ascending order. For example, if you put it based on age, the younger people will be at the beginning and the older people will be at the end. But if you want the older people to be at the beginning, you have to say reverse equals true. Then the older people will be at the beginning. I will run you through bigger examples and better examples soon. So for now, this one by default is false. Let's start with example number one, a basic example, and I will show you a list of numbers that I have prepared, which is 31425. If I show you the sorted function on the numbers, if I can spell it correctly, you will see that it takes one, two, three, four, five. As I said, it goes from smallest to the largest. But if I go ahead and say, hey, I want you to go reverse, it will go five, four, three, two, one. I can still print the numbers, the original list, and you will see that the original list has not changed. The original list is in its own place, and what I've done is only on the fly. I could have saved it under a new name, but for now, it's only on the fly, and it doesn't change the original. But if you did this, which is a Python list method, and you went ahead and said, sort this, and if I print numbers again, you will see that this command has changed the original list, whereas the sorted function doesn't change the original list. So this is a very important distinction. If you don't wanna change the original iterable, make sure you use the sorted function. But if you're dealing with lists only, and if you don't mind changing the original list, you can do this. So really quickly, I will write a note here. If you do not want to change the original iterable, which is only list here, use the sorted function, which is this command here. I will copy it and I'll leave the link to my GitHub repository for you to be able to access this notebook. However, however, if you do not mind overwriting the original list, only use the 
following, which is this one. Copy that and paste it here. So this one doesn't change the original list. This one overrides the original list. And when I said original iterable in this one, it's because sorted function works on any iterable, but this one only works on lists. That's also a distinction for you to remember. Now, example number two. Example number two is using the key parameter. Let's learn how the key parameter works. I've got a list of fruit that I'm using. I've got apple, fig, banana, and cherry, right? If I went ahead and used the sorted function on the words, you will see that I've got apple, banana, cherry, and fig, and it's sorting alphabetically because this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is an F. If I went reverse to true, you would see that I will have fig, cherry, banana, and apple, but I don't want to go reverse. All I want to talk about now is the key. What I could then sort this one on is on the length of each of these. So this one is only three letters. This one is six, this one is five, and this one is also six. What I will do, if I sort this based on the length, you will see that I've got fig, which is three letters. This one is five, and the next two are six letters. That's how I have sorted it. Again, you can go ahead and say, hey, I want you to make this reverse, and you'll have banana, cherry, apple, and fig. Now, I have talked about using Lambda as a key, but I will make a new example, but I encourage you to go and watch my Lambda video. The link will be up the top right. Using Lambda as a key. This one comes on a lot these days that you're using ChatGPT and other large language models to help you code, but you might look at it and you say, I don't really understand what this large language model like ChatGPT is doing. So this is what's happening. Here, I've got a list of tuples. Why do I say list of tuples? Well, this one shows me that this is a list. And inside the list, there are three tuples. So I've got Alice 25, Bob 30, and Charlie is 20. What I want to do now is to sort them by age. So I will be using the sorted function on people. Let's see if it works. It says Alice is 25, Bob is 30, and Charlie is 20. I can very obviously see that it's sorting based on A, B and C, and it's not really looking at these ages here because they're not sorted from smaller to largest. What I then need to do right now is to use the key, right? And use the Lambda function on a person. If you want to call it watermelon, I don't really care. I'm calling them a person because they look like a person to me. And I want to look at the second attribute of the person. I wrote one there because we start counting from zero in Python, so zero and one. If you tell me that you don't still understand this, I can show it this way. This tuple, if I look at index zero, you, you can see that it's Alice, it's the name. If I look at index one, it's the age. So I'm saying take each person, which is you know Alice 25, Bob 30, Charlie 20, and look at their index number one because I am interested in sorting based on their ages. So if I do this, you will see that now, let me delete this bottom one, you will see that now I have sorted this based on people's ages. So I've got 20, 25, and 30. If I made this reverse to true, I would have 30, 25, and 20. Now, what if I were to make this a bit even more complex? So let me make an example example four and using lambda as a complex key. What I want to do now, I want to have two conditions using lambda. I've got records of some of my customers. So I've got Alice Brown who is 25, Bob Smith who is 30, Charlie Smith 20, and Diana Adams 25. If I use the sorted function on the records list, you will see that again, it just uses by default Alice then Bob, then Charlie, then Diana to sort everything. But if I were to sort them based on their age, all I could do is use Lambda for each person and age sits at index zero, one, and two. Age sits at index two for every one of them. So all I need to do is to use index number two 
for each person. If I do this, you will see that the person who is 20, then 25, then 25, then 30 has been sorted. Okay, that one was the easier one. Let's try another easy one. I want to sort these people based on their last name. So I know that their last name sits at index 1 because this is index 0 and this is index 1. So I'll say, hey, sort these people based on their last name. I can see Adams is first, Brown is second, Smith and Smith are third and fourth. Now you might ask me, hey, Amir, what if I want to sort them first based on their last name? and then their first name. It tells me, hey, I've got two conditions. I've got the first condition built in here. That's condition number one. I need another condition, which is index zero, because you're asking me, hey, I want to sort them based on their last name first, which is this one. And then I want to sort them based on their first name, which is this one. If I run this, you will see that I am missing a bracket. But if I fix it, I can see Adams is here, Diana, Brown, Alice, Smith, Bob first, Smith, Charlie next. If I make this a reverse, you will see that the equation changes. You've got Smith, Charlie, Smith, Bob, Brown, Alice, and Adams, Diana. So that's your composite condition, if you like. But I'm just going to get rid of reverse. I want to show you what it looks like. There is a better way, maybe from a readability point of view, that you can write this. Let me show you how it works. So all you need to do is to go sort it again onto your iterable, which is records here. And then for your key, you'll have to use the operator dot item getter. I know that I haven't really talked about item getter here but I will use index one and zero. I'll run this and you will see operator is not really defined because I haven't imported operator here. If I go ahead and import operator and run this, you will see that I am getting exactly the same result as above, but this is a bit more readable from writing the code, but I can't really tell you which one is better. Whatever suits you is better for you, but at the end of the day, I like this code because it is more readable. The next example I want to show you is example number five. Sorted used in dictionaries. Using the sorted function for dictionaries, if I can spell them correctly. I've got a list of dictionaries. So I've got one dictionary, two dictionaries, and three dictionaries inside a bigger list. And I want to use the sorted function to somehow sort this dictionary based on different criteria. Let me go ahead and say, hey, sorted, I want you to do a sorting on people dicts. It says, hey, hey, hang on. I don't really know what to use for sorting dictionaries here. Can you help me? I'll say, oh, sorry. Yes, I can give you a key. I will give you the key. And the key is using the Lambda function to take each person and each person is one dictionary here. And when you go to that person, I want you to take their age attribute. That's what I want you to do. It says, okay, I'll take the age attribute from each dictionary. And I can tell you that there is someone who is 20 years old, someone is 25 and someone who is 30. What if I want to sort them based on their name? Well, I can do that. And you will see that first Alice, then Bob, and then Charlie for C. So your A, B, and C. This is very powerful for dictionaries. My next example is mixing the sorted function with the map function. So let's run an example six using the sorted function map function. All right, let's just make this a markdown nice and tidy. All right, I've got a list of fruit that first I want to convert them to capital case. So Apple will be capital A, capital P, capital P, capital L, capital E, and such and such. And then I will sort them alphabetically. So what I can do now is called new words, if you like, I will use the map function. And inside the map function, I will use the lambda to take every word and take it to uppercase. And the iterable I will be using is the words. 
if I run this, I won't really be able to see the inside. So let me convert this to a list. If you haven't seen my video on the map function, the link is up the top right. That will make more sense once you watch that video. So then if I print the new words, you will see that I've got apple, banana and cherry. Once you have done that, sorting this one should not really be difficult. So all you need to do is to sort the new words, which will give you exactly the same thing because it was already sorted. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, share it with your friends, like my videos and subscribe to my channel. I am building so many videos that will make you a data scientist, AI engineer, MLOps engineer and make you really ready for the job market. Thank you.